Quadratic word problems, and in this lesson I'm going to talk to you about frames, borders, and fences. So a picture that measures 10 by 5 is to be surrounded by a mat before being framed. The width of the mat is to be the same on all sides. The area of the mat is to be twice the area of the picture. What is the width of the mat? Okay, so what you want to do with any of these questions before you begin is draw yourself a little picture with a pencil that works. Here we go. Always have a backup. Okay, so we have a picture. Now remember the picture is inside and a mat is just something that goes around a picture. You probably have seen them before and you're just going to freehand this now. So this would be my picture in here. So here's my lovely picture that I took and I put a mat. This is the mat, this part here. And then the outside would be the frame. So it says the picture is 10 by 5. So put those on your drawing, your measurements, 10 centimeters by 5 centimeters. And it is surrounded by a mat. The width is the same on all sides. So anytime you see that everything's the same, you're going to make it X. <laughs> your pencil is going to break. X. So it's going to be X from here to here. It's going to be X from here to here. And X from here to here. And another X from here to here. Okay, so now what I want you to do is to use this sentence here. The area of the mat is to be twice the area of the picture. And put some words to that. Like write that out in words. And we'll put the math in with it in a minute. The area of the mat has to be equal to two times the area of the picture. Okay, so how do I figure out what the area of the mat is here? Now remember the mat, let me get a color so you can see what I'm talking about. The mat is going to be all this green part, all of this. Now you probably did some calculations like this in grade 9 where you had to find, you were measuring things and you had to find how big something was. So you found the whole outside and you took out the inside, right? So if I, if I knew the entire area of this matted picture, the picture and the mat, so all of this, and I took out the picture, I would be left with the mat, okay? So how big is everything here now? Well, I know it's 10 centimeters from here to here, and I know this is x, 10, and x. So this is going to be 10 plus 2x's. That's the length with the mat. And the width here is going to be 5 centimeters, so x, 5x. So 5 plus 2x is going to be the width. Okay, so. Now the area of the mat is going to be the area of the mat plus the picture minus the area of the picture. We just explained that, right? If I take the whole thing and I take out the picture part, I'm left with the mat. And that has to be two times the area of the picture. So once you've got these words written down, then you can plug in your math here. So what is the area of the mat in the picture? So the length times the width, right? The area is length times width. So I've got 10 plus 2x times 5 plus 2x. So that's the area of the mat and the picture. In other words, everything. And I'm going to subtract the area of the picture. The area of the picture is 10 by 5. 10 times 5. And that has to be equal to twice the area of the picture. So that's going to be 2 times 10 times 5. Okay, so now I have an equation that I can, I can expand all this, bring everything to one side, set it equal to 0, and you know you're going to end up with a quadratic because I'm multiplying two x's here. So let's expand everything out here. So I've got 10 times 5 is 50, and then plus 20x plus 10x plus 4x squared minus 50 
is equal to 100. Okay, so now I'm going to um, bring everything to one side. I'm going to simplify this a little bit more. So I have 4x squared. How many x's do I have? 20 and 10, so it gives me 30 x's. And 50 minus 50, well, that would cancel with that one. And I bring the 100 over here. I'm going to subtract 100 and set that equal to 0. Okay, so now I know that um, I do have a common factor here, so I'm going to divide everything by 2. Divide by 2 here, so it gives me 2x squared plus 15x minus 50 equals 0. Now I'm going to try to use, um, just factor this. Let's see, can we find something that has a product of minus 100? Remember the first times the last, and a sum of 15. And you'd probably say, oh, 20 and 5, I can make, um, 20 and 5 can make 100. So one of them has to be negative, and one of them has to be positive, because I need to add to a positive number, but multiply to negative. So if I do 20 and minus 5, so 20 minus 5 is 15. So those are my two special numbers. So I put those here, 20 minus 5, and I'm going to divide by, make two fractions with the first on the bottom. If you're having trouble with your factoring, go back and look on how to factor trinomials where the coefficient is not 1. I have a lesson for you on that. Okay, and I simplify this. This gives me 10 over 1. This one's already simplified. I cannot reduce that fraction. So the x goes with the bottom, the other on top. So it gives me x plus 10 and 2x minus 5. So x plus 10 times 2x minus 5 equals 0. So x is equal to, I would get minus 10 for this bracket to make that 0. And this one set to 0, you would say, well, let's write it out. 2x minus 5 equals 0. 2x equals 5, x equals 5 over 2. So x equals 5 over 2. So one of these solutions obviously is inadmissible. I cannot have a negative length, right? There's no negative lengths. No negative lengths. You don't measure something negatively. So my answer is 5 halves, and I would say, therefore, the mat should be should be 2.5 centimeters wide okay so that's the first one that was a frame one now let's do something with borders borders frames they're all the same it could be something like you know a, a walkway around um, a swimming pool this one's going to be a garden but you could change the words to be anything you want here really Okay, so a garden measures 18 by 12. So I'm going to draw myself a diagram. 18 by 12. It doesn't have to be the scale. 18 meters, 12 meters. That's my garden. A border of tulips is to be planted around the perimeter. So I'm going to put some tulips in around the perimeter. So here's all my little tulips. It's a border of tulips. And the Tulip Festival in Ottawa is just over because it's May. Okay, there's my flowers. Oh, let's make it a little prettier. There we go. There's my flowers, my tulips. And it says the total area of the tulip bed, so this, this is like a mat here, right? Same thing, is to be half the area of the garden. How wide should the tulip bed be? Okay, so let's write out in words what we're going to do. We said that the area of the tulip beds, area of tulips, has to be half the area of the garden. Okay, so we've got words for it. Now let's put in some numbers. So what is the area of the tulip? So again, this is just like the one we did previously, except this time, because we had the outside measurements, that's why I wanted to do this one, um, it means that 
this area is going to be, this is my X in here, okay, so we have an X, 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 X. So this length in here is going to be 18 minus two X's. That's going to be the area of the garden, right? The, the inside garden. So the part that doesn't have tulips. So this is going to be 12 minus two X. So I had to do that because I'm trying to find a, um, a relationship for just the area of the tulips. So the area of the tulips is going to be the area of everything minus the inside, right? Area of garden. And we're going to subtract the um, non-tulip bed garden. I don't know how else to explain that. Non-tuliped garden. And we want that to be equal to half the area of the garden. Half area total garden. Okay, we're talking gardens and gardens here. So the whole thing is just one big garden with tulips and then something else in the middle here. They don't tell you what they're going to put there. Maybe it's just grass. Okay, so the area of the garden here now is 18 by 12 this time. 18 by 12. That's the whole outside. And I'm going to subtract away the non-tuliped garden. So that's this part in here, right? That's 18 minus 18 minus 2x times 12 minus 2x. And that's going to be half the total area of the garden. So half of 18 by 12 is going to be, um, oh, we could do it over here, something like this. Half 18 times 12, that goes in 9. 9 times 12 is 108. So that's 108 square meters. Okay, so now all I have to do is expand and simplify this. So 18 times 12, 8 times 12 is 216. And I'm going to subtract. Now I'm going to be really careful here because I'm subtracting all of this that I'm multiplying out. So I'm going to do that separately. So I have 216 minus 36x minus 24x plus 4x squared equals 108. So make sure that you're expanding very carefully and making sure that you're subtracting everything here. So 216, I'll write out every step here, minus 216 plus 36x plus 24x minus 4x squared equals 108. Okay, so don't rush when you have something that's this complicated. Don't rush to, you know, and, and then end up making a mistake with this minus sign. So 216 minus 216, that's done. So I have minus 4x squared. So I'm going to write it in descending order. And 36 plus 24 is 60. And I'm bringing the 108 to the other side. So it's going to be minus 108 is equal to zero. And I can divide by a negative, um, I could divide by negative four here, can't I? So I'm gonna write that here so you know what I did. Divide by negative four. And you can divide now because it is set to zero. Okay, if this was a function, you couldn't do that, but it's you're solving an equation. So you can divide by negative four. So get minus 15x, and this is going to be plus 27 equals zero. Now, do you know two numbers that multiply to 27 and add to 15? I'll give you um, two seconds to tell me, no, nothing will. So when you're stuck, what do you do? You use a quadratic formula. Okay, so I'm going to use x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so that's going to give me 15. So minus minus is a plus plus or minus the square root of 15 squared minus 4 times a times c all over to a is 1. So that's going to give me 15 plus or minus the square root of, and I've done this ahead of time, I cannot do all that in my head, but maybe I could 
make you believe that. <laughs> and so that ends up with, um, we get 15 plus or minus 10.8 divided by two. I'm gonna bring that way over here now. Whoop. So that's gonna give me X is equal to 2.1 or X is equal to 12.9. So now we have to decide is one of these an inadmissible solution? And I think you can see right away, this would be way too big. I can't have X being 12.9 because two of them would be what, 20, 25.8 and the whole thing is only 18 meters wide. So this one is inadmissible. Remember we have two sides to our parabola at the same height. Um, so inadmissible, therefore the uh, tulip bed. Make sure you're answering what you were asked. Bed should be 2.1 meters in width. Okay, so again, always set up some words, then translate that into the math, and you'll find these much easier to do. Okay, the next one I'm going to do, this is um, one more with, with framing. It's another garden question, a little bit different. It says a rectangular garden, 15 by 24. Okay, so I'm gonna draw that one, 15 by 24, 15 by 24 meters. Is to be enlarged by adding the same amount to each side. The new area is to be one and a half times larger. How much should be added to each side? So. You can do this two ways. I was thinking, well, what if what if we had a hedge here? You can't make this bigger by, like you could do, like we did with a frame. You could do this, right, and add it in. That's one option. Or the other option is to say, well, let's make this bigger by X, and we'll make this bigger by X. And this makes the calculation just a little bit easier. But doesn't matter if you did it this the other way where you made the frame around the whole thing that will work as well except remember that you would have two X's here instead of just one if I said um, I'm going to do 24 plus X so this length is now going to be 24 plus X and this is going to be 15 plus X so my garden is now going to be area equals 24 plus X times 15 plus X. And I want the area to be one and a half times larger. So what's one and a half times larger than what I had? So right now I had area now is 24 times 15. And so that gives you um, 360. And so one and a half times this 360 times 1.5 is going to give me 540 meters squared. So that's what I want the area of my new garden to be. Okay, so now all you have to do is um, set this equation equal to 540. So I'm going to, well, I'll write it out again one more time. 24 plus X times 15 plus X has to be equal to 540. Now what you want to do is expand this bring the 5 forward to the other side and set it equal to 0. So 24 times 15 is 360, uh, 24x plus 15x, hopefully you know how to expand two binomials. I'm going to subtract 540 and set it equal to 0. So then I can either solve by factoring or by using the quadratic formula. So I have x squared and I have 39x's and 360 minus 540 is minus 180 equals 0. And I don't know two numbers that multiply to minus 180 and add to 39. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root. Hopefully you know your quadratic formula off by heart. b squared minus 4 times a times c minus 180, sorry, all over... 2a. And just to save some time here, you can do that math. You should get 4.2. 
So it says how much should be added to each side. So you'd say therefore 4.2 meters should be added to each side. Or maybe you could have been asked what are the new dimensions. So you would just say 24, uh, 28.2 and 19.2. Okay. So that's another little border garden kind of question. And the last two questions, these are a little bit easier. These are what we call fencing questions. Or so we have a puppy run is to be built against a wall. So there's always two things. Sometimes you're building things against a wall. So if I put a wall like this, it doesn't matter, you just say it's of indeterminate length or it's going to be long enough. And you have 30 meters of fencing and you want to maximize the area for the puppy. So we're going to make um, a rectangular run. I think it should have said that in the question somewhere. So, um, well, it does say length and width, so I guess that kind of determines that it's going to be a rectangle. So I'm trying to build a fence that's going to be like this. Now there's something in here, and that is this number here. This is called a constraint on the question. You only have 30 meters of fencing. If you had 100,000 meters of fencing, you could make a really big run, but you only have 30 meters. So the 30 meters is talking about the length plus the width, right, which means perimeter. So the perimeter of my, of my uh, puppy run is actually going to be equal to the amount of fencing that I have, right? That makes sense. So I have two X's plus Y has to be equal to 30. Now, I'm trying to maximize the area. So that means you should look to this question for the equation that you want to be using. So I want to use area length times width. So width, length times width here is going to be x times y. So the problem is that I have two variables here, x and y, and I only want one. And how you do that is you use this equation here, your equation of constraint, to write it in terms of one variable. So that means y is going to be equal to 30 minus 2x. And my length times width is xy and now I'm going to take this which is my y and I'm going to substitute it in for this y so I have everything in terms of x so I have x times 30 minus 2x and you should recognize now that you have a quadratic formula here right you have not a quadratic formula so you have a quadratic equation where you have it in factored form so I can say well the zeros for this would be zero and so if I set this equal to zero to solve I would say x would be equal to zero and 30 minus 2x so that means x is going to be equal to 15 so those end up being the two zeros of my function zero and 15 and where does the maximum occur right in the middle so I add them up so the axis is going to be 0 plus 15 divided by 2 and that's going to give me 7.5 so right here we're going to reach a maximum height and that's when x is 7.5 so my maximum happens when x is 7.5 and so I get x is 7.5 and what's y going to be equal to so um, let's put it right over here so when x equals 7.5, y equals 30 minus 2 times 7.5. 2 times 7.5 is 15, and 30 minus 15 is 15. So there's your concluding statement. Therefore, the dimensions should be, and this is to maximize, should be 15 meters by 7.5 meters. And you can double check. So 15 plus 7.5 and 7.5 and gives me that magic 30 meters that I had. Okay, and the very last one here I'm going to do for you is a cattle farmer trying to make uh, three pens with 120 meters of fencing. So this time there's no wall. There's no wall happening here at all. We just have three pens. So one, 
two, and three. So he wants to build this type of fencing and he has 120 meters. So again, this is perimeter and that is an equation of constraint or the constraint on our question here. So um, find the dimensions that will maximize the area. So let's call this Y and this X. So that means everywhere I have fence, I have to put a variable for it. So if I only had two, then I would just have the three of them, but I have four X's here. So I've got a fence, a fence, a fence, a fence, and fence here, fence here. So the perimeter, um, it's not really perimeter. Well, I guess it's perimeter of all the, of all the pins equals, so I have two Y's and four X's. And those two Y's and four X's have to add up to 120 meters. So for these type of questions, you have two equations that you're working with. You have your perimeter equation and you have your area. So X times Y, length or width times length or whatever way you want to say it. Okay, so this is the equation I'm trying to solve for. I want to maximize this. So I'm looking for um, the X of symmetry for an equation that I'm going to build over here by isolating one of the variables here. Now, it doesn't matter which one you choose, but there's always one that's a little bit better to use. So if you thought about it, if I said, uh, well, let's solve for X, then I would end up with a fraction of a Y over here when I divide by that four. But if I do solve for Y, I can divide everything by two, right? Or you could do that right away. But I would say, I'd say two Y equals 120 minus four X's. So that means y is going to be 60 minus 2x. And now I can just plug that in here. So area is going to be um, x times 60 minus 2x. So again, we have a factored form quadratic here. So the zeros for this function are 0, and what makes this zero? Well, that would be x is 30, right? So where does the maximum occur? So we're finding maximum occurs when x equals zero plus 30 over two, because remember these are, this is like this part here. We found these two numbers, and I wanna know where is it the highest, and that's gonna be right in the middle at 15, right? So x equals 15. So if x is 15, we have an equation here for y. When x equals 15, y is equal to 60 minus 2 times 15. So y is going to be 30. Therefore, the length should be now you, you should be checking this, 30 meters, and the width, 15 meters. Okay, let's go back. If we said this was, the length is 30, so we say this is 30, and this is 15. So I have 30, 60, another 30 for two of them, that's 90, and another 30 makes 120 meters of fencing, and there's your lesson for today. Hope you found that helpful. There's one more, um, one more word problem lesson and that will deal with numbers and open top boxes and that kind of stuff. Bye for now. Don't forget to subscribe.